Well, in 2012, Eating House became a fixture of the Miami culinary scene, attracting who's who in the Magic City. And in 2022, it reopened its doors, reimagined at its new home in the Gables, inviting us back to an even more unique and elevated dining moment. I experienced this for myself with chef and owner Giorgio Rappicavoli, who showed me firsthand why Eating House is a dining powerhouse. Okay, we're inside with the man who makes it all happen, the owner and chef of Eating House, Mr. Giorgio Rappicavoli. Pleasure. <laughs> the name, you're a star, man, awesome. you're a star. Congratulations on this place, it Thanks is so awesome. Fresh, open, energetic, hip, trendy. Yes, The try. first, you, you, you succeed. Thank you. You succeed, the first Eating House was opened in 2012, became a Miami staple. Yes. You decided to shut down for what, a year and a half? Yeah, about a year and a half. And then reopen and here we are. Yes, and this gorgeous, beautiful location. We're on Geraldo Avenue. It's and pretty much Gables. yeah, restaurant row of Coral Gables. Yeah, right. Man, you're super young, and you've been so successful. What has that been like for you, having two very successful restaurants, and a city like Miami? It's a it's a hard city to yeah. open a restaurant in. Um, you know, we we wanted to make a restaurant for Miami that we thought really represented Miami, and I think it resonated well with the people, right? Like we cook our flavors. We are Miamians, we employ Miamians. Like I think this restaurant epitomizes what Miami is and people just related to it. Now you reimagined Eating House at this location, of course yes. still in the Gables. The process of that, how did you want to make this place different? As I said, when I walked in, you're, it's, it's, there's an airiness about it. You, you feel like you're stepping into an experience. Well, we love that. And hopefully the decor kind of resonates well with the guests as well. And you kind of see this like, the wine program is serious, uh, the food is serious, we, but we just don't really take ourselves too seriously. And I think that's why people like this place. Like we have a fun, inventive cocktail menu. Um, a lot of the core dishes are classic. Some have been reimagined. But again, the, the soul of this restaurant is still eating house, right? Like fun, inventive food that changes all the time. We always do a bunch of like cool menus. We have great dishes that change all the time. And that's what people come back for. G, you talk about the menu, the Tasty Miami menu is yes. really cool because yeah. it changes with different flavors, different drinks, different reasons to really get into it. Yeah, and it's, I mean, most restaurants wouldn't say, you know what, like let's make a menu that promotes seven other restaurants in the city instead of your own. But like, that's what it's all about. Like it's called Tasting Miami because every dish is inspired by a Miami staple restaurant. So we take kind of like the ethos of what these restaurants are and then we kind of imagine a dish that's dedicated to these restaurants. Oh my God, we're here with the food. Gee, this is incredible. I mean, this is a spread. The carbonara is authentic. Look at that egg on top. You can smell, you can smell the prosciutto. Okay, what are we working with here? What's going on? All right, so this is a yellowfin tuna crudo. So we prepare it uh, almost like a tiradito in the sense that it has leche de tigre, but we do it with black truffles and some sunchoke chips, some really good olive oil. It's this juxtaposition of the fish quality, mm -hmm. it's a little sweet, it's a little tart. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Wow. This is our carbonara. Which I cannot wait to dive yeah. into. So we make the bucatini the same way we make bucatini over at Luca, where we make pasta fresh every day. Uh, this is our interpretation on carbonara, not hyper traditional in a sense that it does have guanciale, a little more of an ode to the one my mom used to make me growing up with bacon. Uh, some black truffles, some carbon breadcrumbs, a little egg yolk on top. Wow. Yeah, it's yummy. At first taste, creamy. You really get that, the crisp of the bacon, but it's mm -hmm. super flavorful. Those breadcrumbs are just everything. And then this is like kind of the signature dessert of the restaurant, which is the dirt cup. Um, <laughs> so it's a dark chocolate mousse with a cocoa streusel on top. And then there's candied hazelnuts and hazelnut ice cream, really reminiscent of the flavors of Janduya. Big spoon, <laughs> very good. Yeah, so hazelnut ice cream, again, made for us by Crybaby Creamery. Um, then there's a nice dark chocolate mousse on top, some candied hazelnuts for crunch. There's a little bit of salt hidden in there. Nice. It is like an airy, chocolatey, very decadent, but delicate mousse. Yes. With a bitter yet sweet chocolate crunch. Very good. Perfection. Hey. Wow. Love it. <laughs> Jordan, right. this is incredible, isn't it? Thank you so much. Please come to Eating House here in Coral Gables. Experience all this for yourself. You can go to eatinghouse.com to see the full menu. Also to find out more about the restaurant. Chef and owner, Thank you. Giorgio Rappicavoli. Such a pleasure. It has been an experience, as I said before. Thank and you. congratulations on Thanks super so much. great restaurants and here's to the future. It means a lot to us. Thank you.